sticking with diet for the moment. So, which is always a contentious subject, right? So I, I just thought in general, what kind of diets do you see work best? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. And as you said, it's not an easy question because all of our mantra at Insta Tracker is to give you a personal diet. Um, so so it's a, I, sh- I would say the best diet for you is a diet that's good for you. And in order to know what is your diet, you need to build it specifically for you. And it's not to say that the paleo is the best or a South Beach, Beach diet is the best. You need to really uh, uh, tailor it for you. Now, if you don't want to do it because it's too hard or you're too busy, uh, there is a lot of data from the peer-reviewed scientific publication that show that a Mediterranean diet or a a vegan diet have been shown a lot of a a positive effect of the majority of the population, but there are some population that is not good for them. For example, for a vegan diet, it's not good for someone that is exercising a lot or someone that have a low vitamin B12 or someone that have low iron. So I, what I would say, high level, if you go for the 80-20 and you want to choose one diet, I would say, yeah, Mediterranean diet and the vegan diet is good. But if you want to get to the 100%, then you need to uh, look into your body and understand what the biomarker are saying and then tailor the diet that will allow you to optimize your blood biomarkers. So when you're looking at the biomarkers, what range do you use for your kind of target? Is it yeah, like- that, that's a very good question. And uh, it's something that are uh, really confusing the audience. So the, let, let's talk a bit about the normal ranges. And the normal range is basically what your physician are uh, looking at and uh, basically telling you you are normal or out of the normal and then let's treat you. So the normal range is basically calculated by the diagnostic lab. And basically they are looking at the uh, tens of thousands of patients that got tested. And then they are uh, trying to find what is the mean and what is two standard deviation above or below, and that's basically the normal range, okay? The issue with the normal range that is calculated for the whole population, so basically sick and healthy. And that's, uh, uh, we think that it's wrong because it shouldn't include a, a sick population because then it's not normal range. <laughs> so we develop another range that we call optimal range. And what is nice about the optimal range is first, is based only on healthy people. Mm-hmm. And second, it's a range that develops specifically for subpopulations. So instead of having uh, combining everyone together, we are uh, asking you whether you are male or female, whether you are athletic active or not, whether uh, you are a Caucasian or a, a, a different ethnicity. And based on that, we are developing a, a, an optimal range specifically for you. So uh, per definition, the normal range are wider and the optimal range are much narrower. And then the, the idea is, is the idea of uh, prevention. Basically, because it's narrower, when you go out of the uh, optimal range, you are still in the normal range, but we will uh, recommend to you some intervention that include food, supplement, exercise, and lifestyle changes. Hopefully, we will bring you back to the optimal range and then hopefully you will stay out of, out of the normal range for longer and hopefully you will live longer, better life. That's the idea. Right. So the, actually, so the interventions that you recommend, so you talked about exercise and food. Do you, and do you, do you include sleep and relaxation? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have four a, a bucket of uh, recommendation. One is uh, nutrition or food. One is supplement. Another one is exercise, and the last is lifestyle changes. And lifestyle changes can be uh, sleep, meditation, and other. Which is the most important of those? Yeah, it's, 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 again, it's hard to say because it depends on the biomarker that is not optimized. Let me give you an example. If you, let's take a marker that's called cortisol, which is a stress hormone. So if your stress hormone is high, it's very hard to correct it by nutrition but it's easier to correct it by uh, meditation and sleep, mostly lifestyle, okay? If your vitamin D is low, it's the easiest way to correct it is taking a supplement. So the best way to correct is by a supplement. If your, uh, uh, let's say your uh, lipids are high, uh, the best way to correct it is either nutrition in combination with exercise. So I, I try to show you how different marker have a different uh, kind of intervention that will work the best for you. 
So it's very hard to, to generalize it and to say, hey, the, the most important is uh, nutrition. So do you include intermittent fasting as one of your interventions? Yeah, of course, yes. And, and so that's intermittent fasting for one day or? We, we, have, we have, again, what we are doing is we are mining the peer review scientific publication mm-hmm. and giving recommendation based on that. So it depends on your situation, you might uh, receive a different kind of uh, intermittent mm-hmm. fasting. For, uh, and depending on the level of the market and the, maybe depending on your gender and depending on a lot of different things, you receive a different kind or different uh, mm-hmm. regime of intermittent fasting. But uh, uh, we have seen in the literature that uh, uh, intermittent fasting have shown to, um, to improve a, a, a lot of uh, market related to uh, longevity. Uh, such as uh, lipids and glucose and uh, also a uh, uh, resting heart rate and also a uh, uh, pulse pressure. So there is a lot of evidence that intermittent fasting can actually help, uh, at least in human, because it's very hard to do a lifestyle, a life, lifespan experiment with human. There are uh, uh, markers that show that uh, uh, in human, Markers that related to longevity are uh, really becoming better when you intermittent fast. Mm-hmm.